Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de Lalande. Lalande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. I have just woken up to a very beautiful sight and sound. I can hear soaring in the entrance hall and something wonderful is outside the window. Ian's van. After lockdown, Ian has finally been able to start work inside the chateau again and he is putting skirting board in our entrance hall. Would you believe it? There's still no skirting board in there after 15 years. Oh, listen to the banging. Oh, it makes me so happy. Things are happening. Somebody <laughs> came bearing beef. Oh, she was... <gasps> Mummy! Was it Ian? Yes. Oh, the little angel. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I think I shall have a croissant, please. A croissant? Yes. Look at this. Oh, it's a fat one. The napkin has a croissant on it, look. See, it was meant for it. <laughs> I shall place it directly above the croissant. Yeah. Let's go and have a closer look. Ian? Hello! Good morning. How <laughs> good are morning. You? I'm very good. And how are you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, I think that looks quite smart. It does. And so it begins. Indeed it does. Yes, that's quite a nasty crack, isn't it? It's incredibly nasty. Yeah, I wanted you to have a little look at it, but yeah. I think we're going to have to check that beam. Just make sure it's well, not the beam. Definitely. It could be the beam. It could, be the, it could just be the tannins from the beam that's inside yeah. about, or it could just be the fixings were loose. It may be absolutely nothing at all, but it is going that way. So there is some movement. Like I'm hoping that, yeah. that all it is is that we put heating in obviously when we arrived and the whole house has resettled yes. a bit since then yeah. but nevertheless we can't decorate this room till we've no, no. sorted out that beam but we'll, we'll take out a section here and then we can get into the wood we can see the density of the wood and see how we go and then we get the plaster in to repair that before I decorate yes yes we can get the you know, the oh I hope the beam's okay oh, please oh, let the beam be okay it doesn't, it doesn't look to be any deflection in the beam itself <laughs> I think it's more a plaster issue <laughs> That she's necessary with the husband. Well, you're looking for this. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find them? In the rose beds. In the rose beds? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Well, that is explained by the fact that when we were asking Mummy Ian and I where she might have left them, she said, I do not know, maybe when I jumped over the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and it, they must have fallen off, you yes. see, they when I jump. Cord. I know, you need yes, a string you on them. If you go into the car. Because yes, we all I suffer can. when you lose them, don't we? We all suffer. And I suffer more. Yes. <laughs> I, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. You know, I prayed to Saint Anthony very of Padua. Good, very good in finding things. Well, no, yeah. you That's thought it was you. The Fontaine. Uh, yeah, I know. Yes. All, all the big X. That's true, you did, that's true. But it's yeah, not you, Selma. It was St. Anthony working through you, yes. apparently. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You felt yeah. it. Connected. Yes, you are. <laughs> Wonderful. How is it going? It's looking Lovely. really good. I love the intricate corners. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure. That's the bits I like with wallpapering yeah, too. Indeed. You'll have a few. Yeah. Definitely will. <laughs> and I like your plan to put the final bit of beading on after the wallpaper. Yes. So that we know it's a neat edge. Neat edge, yes. <laughs> I did think about maybe just to make it a bit more right, and another little bead at the bottom as well. Oh, that would be nice. That would look it is after all the chateau. Indeed. <laughs> Let's bling it up. The more detail, the better. <laughs> 
We're about to go on a little walk this afternoon to discover a new part of the forest. So I thought we should take provisions because I don't like a walk without provisions. And I'm going to try to cook one little thing from this picnic book. I think that little filled breads sound fun because they're completely closed. They're baked with a filling inside, so it'll be easy to carry them with us. I can't blame the recipe if this doesn't work because we've run out of bread flour. I found this at the back of the cupboard, which I thought was bread flour, but it turns out that it's one of those ready-made bread mixes. So I've made it like this instead of following the recipe. We'll see if it works. And there we go. I'm just going to leave it there to rise. Just make it into a smooth ball. Oh, you've already done that. Well, you say I've done it. The thermo mix needed it for me. Oh, that's beautiful. Because I was tremendously busy. That's a beautiful texture. Looking up an old book on um, Toile de Jouy that I'm about to order. We've got a very old baking okay. book from, I don't know, 1900. Have we? Oh, we mm. should look at that. Your father had it. I'm putting this on top, but actually, mummy, this is too beautiful. In fact, I barely want to touch it because I have oil on my hands. This is too beautiful to it use. It is beautiful. Someone sent this to me back in the winter. And I think this should be not in the kitchen because it will get stained like all of our other tea towels. I think it should be a cushion. What do you think? Oh, what a it's good, the same size as a It's pillow. a good idea. Imagine it there on the chaise longue. Excellent It'd be idea. Perfect. You really are quite a little bit of a genius, aren't you? Oh, well, it's not often I hear that from you, Mummy. <laughs> Only when it's true. Okay, let's put this in a warm spot. Over there should do it. Out of a draft. And I'll check that in an hour. Abby, you'll be impressed with this one. This is worth it. You always impress me, Ian. <sighs> now I have to get to a boy's heart. <laughs> Get that oh, look now. at that. Now that is, I love the way you did it without disturbing the cobweb. Now that is clever. Yes, I didn't disturb the cobwebs. <laughs> look, look here. Look. See? I am the David Attenborough of La Lange. <laughs> I think what? it might be time to bring Mary Poppins in from the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> you are racing around the room now. We are, we are. That's one little bit left. And go over That's here. Right. And again, I'll have to just cut those uh, again. That's incredibly annoying. Yes, there's a few bits like that, but I think we've covered most of them up. The bread delivery just came, the bread van. Ah. This is my happiest time, two days a week. Look at that, look at that bread. This one is amazing. And she comes wearing a mask and we just leave the purse of money out for her to take how much she needs. So I better wash my hands now. Right, I have to make the filling. I've had to make a few substitutions, like the bread. We're using what we have in the house. So we have rosemary, that's all good. We have the fennel seeds. We have anchovy fillets. We don't have a bird's eye chili, so I'm going to use some piment d'espelette. We don't have ripe tomato, so I've gone off piste here. We're going to use a sun-dried tomato pesto. I think that's good. So I'm just going to mix that all up. Just chop up the anchovy fillets, roughly. Adding them to yummy fennel and rosemary and chilli. This should be good. And now we'll try using up this pesto. In goes the pesto instead of fresh tomatoes because we have run clean out. I quite like the fact lockdown has, I think, made us better at just making do with things. Because now lockdown is over, I could actually go to the supermarket, but I'm happier in the house. Eating delicious food and going for nice walks. Right, that's our filling. Doesn't look like a lot of filling. I think I'm going to open another jar. I'm going to shape the little breads now and put this aside. I'm going to hide this round the corner. I've got to knead it again. Move that out of the way. I sometimes think the only reason I go for a walk is to have the picnic at the other end. Do you enjoy doing that? 
Um, I, I quite enjoy doing this, but I equally enjoy putting it in the machine for it to do it. It's not as though it makes it more real, the taste of the bread for me, if I've kneaded it myself. I always think of Daddy when I do it, though, because he loved making it. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. I wondered if you got the same genes. Well, I got the same <laughs> love of bread. <laughs> Pull off a plum-sized piece. It's a plum? Should we say that's a plum? That's a big plum. Wow. Yes, that's a plum. Let's go for a big plum. Um... Flatten it into a circle, brush the edge with water, and put a dessert spoon of filling into the center. Right, I'm going to make all of my little circles first. Circle, I mean... You can leave them as little... Square, yeah. rectangle, doesn't matter. It's the taste that counts. They'll all be a bit different. And made. Yes, made with love. <laughs> Don't make them bigger and bigger. <laughs> I always do that. Then I'll end up with one giant one at the end. Mummy helped me and we have made 15 perfect circles, as you can see. <laughs> uh, this one, this one's a particularly good circle. I mean, there's, there's, there are some great ones. But I think it doesn't matter because we're actually just making little pasties, effectively, but with bread dough. So it doesn't really matter what shape they are. And this is the filling that I made by just mixing various um, sun-dried tomato pestos together, the end of two different jars, fennel, a little bit of piment d'espelette, and anchovies, oh, and rosemary as well. And it tastes really good, I've tried it. Very professional. Oh yes, you can see, we've been having this recipe in the family for centuries. I think we're just going to be okay. We may have to poach from some of the early ones. I'm sure everyone's been there before. Start off super generously and then get more and more sparing as you get towards the end. Yes, you've been over generous. Great. Oh, Nicolas and Antoine are here, ready for the walk. Well, if we would be allowed the walk in 45 minutes, we're going to have little breads to take with us. C'est ce que je t'avais dit. <laughs> Qu'est-ce que tu l'avais dit? <laughs> Et tu ne serais pas prêt. Il me connaît bien. Okay, let's fold these over. We need to brush the edge with a tiny bit of water and then make them into little pasties. Oh! Il euh, y a quelqu'un pour toi. Oh, euh, euh, un poste. Une voiture jaune. Nothing makes Antoine move faster than the postman arrives. The yellow, the <laughs> yellow <laughs> van has yellow arrived. Van. <laughs> This is near the last. Uh, yes, See? we have to leave these on the baking tray for half an hour, so okay. they just rise a little bit more, and then don't put them too close. Then, yeah. They only bake for 15 minutes, which is really quick for a type of bread. It will be on very high then, eh? Yes. They're too close, darling. You need two trays. But does it matter if they touch? They didn't rise that much last time. I don't think they're going to rise that much this time. I don't think we're going to have a big problem. Let's see who's right. Okay. Looks as though I got away with it. They look exactly the same size as they did half an hour ago. <laughs> And I'm going to pop them into the oven. There they are. They look good, I can't wait to try them. I have a confession to make. We just got in from our walk. I filmed the whole thing with the microphone off. I have no sound at all. I can't believe I did that. So there's only one thing for it. I am going to copy Michael Petherick's genius and make you a montage. So here it is. The Lalande Montage.
big excitement in the house as Mummy has ordered a load of dirt. And it's just arrived. I've never heard the peacocks so excited. Hello, Bernard. No. Where's <laughs> going <laughs> Mummy, why are you asking me where to put it? I don't know the first thing about the garden. Bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. How much money have you spent on a big pile of earth? Never. A penny before. And how much have you spent this? I'm more interested in how much you've spent I don't know, this I time. Seen the, the, the price. Just to let everyone else know, my mother's just informed me I'm about to have to make a bank transfer for this. <laughs> yes, 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 I did. <laughs> There's something very pleasurable about watching a good driver. We're putting it here. Big day, exciting day to be alive. Yeah, but it can only come here. <laughs> Whoa! Well, that is actually a weirdly beautiful sight to see a lorry do that. The massive great big pile of earth in the courtyard is less beautiful. <laughs> au revoir. Au revoir. Okay, so let us know when you've moved it all, Antoine. <laughs> this is two very, very excited people. I don't think that all the riches in the kingdom could have made either of you happier than this pile of earth. Dan is here. It's his second visit to Lalan and from now on it's going to be once a week. This is exciting. He's making a beautiful job, wow, of pruning the hedges around the roses. Hi Dan. Hi, how are you? Really good, and you? It's hot. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> it is beautiful. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen this bed so clear and this hedge. Well, your mother was cracking the whip today, so. Was she? <laughs> Yeah, she does that. <laughs> and Dan has also cleared this entire wall. All the edging. I mean, I haven't seen it like this. I, I think once before in the whole time we, we were here, this has been cleared. Oh, and Mummy's been planting in it. What did Mummy plant in it, Dan? Uh, courgettes, I think. Courgettes. Yeah. C'est original. <laughs> Growing the courgettes under the vines. Lalande style. Selma, have you any idea how happy I am seeing this? I didn't know, I hadn't seen you start to lay this out. I know, I've been editing solidly for two days and look what's happened outside. There's a lot of work to make it Wow. Yeah, I can't believe it's all coming together like this. And that is a beautiful line. Look at that line against the hedge. Oh, that's stunning. And now we need to get flowers. <laughs> it is wonderful. The earth is here, which means a new load of work. Oh, goody. Yes, yes, goody. And uh, so Mummy, I, yes. I have some bad news on the dahlias. I don't believe it. Yeah, I tracked the dahlias down. Yes. They'd use my billing address instead of Jerry's address for delivery. So they're in London. 300 pounds worth of dahlias was attempted to be delivered to my London flat, which is completely empty. Um, and the company have incredibly nicely said that they are completely refunding me for it <gasps> as a gesture of goodwill. Oh my but it's a bit late to order dahlias now. So instead, I will spend that money on getting any other flowers that you want for these beds this summer. W who did you order with? Jay Parker, they're oh. called. Yeah, that was really good of them, really good of them. Wonderful. Okay. So, uh, are you putting the first uh, wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow load? Wheelbarrow full in one as a gesture. A what? <laughs> a gesture. I'll, I'll film you loading one barrel full and putting it in there. Oh la 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 la. Come on. <laughs> I hope you realise, Mummy, this is purely symbolic. Okay.
Okay, there we go. Last one. Oh, it was a lot easier on the way out. Where am I going with it? Uh, the first one I suggest. This one? I don't mind. You can go to the first one, that's up to you. First one's looking good. <laughs> and lift the whole thing. I'm going to try. Will it go in? Woohoo! <gasps> yes, peacock! <laughs> I better go edit a video now. <laughs> oh, the garden's so tidy. I cannot believe that Dan has only been here twice and the whole garden is actually starting to look like a garden. This is a lovely rose that I planted when we very first moved in. Actually, I promised I'd show you the Albertine rose when it was at its most beautiful, and that's right now. So let's have a look at that. This rose is spectacular, but the best one is right at the end of this border. Let's go and have a look. Look at this Albertine rose. It's rampant. And Thor peeking around the corner. This seems like a good spot for me to give you some good news. Oh, really? Today, this actual day, the day that the vlog is at going out, so the yes. day that you will all be watching it this evening, Thursday, we have reached our $10,000 patron target. Yes, it's happened, Mummy. <laughs> and you know what that means? You, it means a little treat? It means the courtyard! The a courtyard! Treat. A treat. Yes, it means that the tiny box hedges around the fountain are finally going to be joined by a lot of other plants in a spectacular scheme which is being put together by a landscape designer called Tamira in Canada. That's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> so Thank you. So a thousand thank yous to all of my patrons. You're transforming this chateau, but so fast beyond all of our wildest dreams. I mean, as we're trying to complete one of the things that we said for one of the targets, we're hitting the next target. Selma hasn't finished managing to box the new beds in, and he's, I mean, he's actually nearly finished. He's done an amazing job. Then the arches are going to arrive. Then Selma's going to make the automatic watering system. And whilst that's ongoing, we've now got the go ahead to move on the courtyard, which is going to be transformed. We're starting with a beautiful planting scheme around the fountain and then we'll also in the future be adding climbing roses against the central facade which is the newer facade and then we will be getting gravel to make it all beautiful and finally the entrance to the chateau will be spectacular and all because of my patrons so an absolutely huge thank you from Lalande. Absolutely. A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Mackies and Mackies of Lalande, Alice, Allen, Daniela, Dan Banda, Danelle Bernakovic, Jason and Valerie Best, Veronica Castillo, Laura DeMare, Sakura Dennis, Dottie Anna Farmery, Caroline Furster, Brenda Gibbons, Brenda Harris, Anthony Hindmarsh, Laure Oukier, Yedelund, Pauline Johnson, Jimmy Kemp, David and Summer Lalande, Shannon Maitland, JC O'Ward, Maureen Palmer, Bettina Rojek, Barbara Schmelzer, Sven Schreiber, Patty Suhu, Sarah Thor Thornton, Colleen Troyer, Brand Walton, Brian Woodward, and David Young. And thank you to all of you.